Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com. In this video, we're going to compare two of the hottest smartphones on the market, the iPhone 5 and the Samsung Galaxy S3. Let's get to it. So just look at these two devices. They are vastly different in so many ways. It's very clear that the companies behind these phones think very differently about how people want to use their smartphone. Apple thinks that people want a smaller screen with better one-handed usability. Samsung thinks that people want big screens, big beautiful screens that they can watch movies on that are in standard resolution formats. Let's start off with specs. The Samsung Galaxy S3 has 1280 by 720 resolution. That is true 720p. The iPhone 5 has kind of a weird resolution, 1136 by 640. So it doesn't play back full HD video. It kind of downsamples it a little bit. Uh, and we're going to look at 720p video in a minute and see if you can really tell the difference. Now, depending on which Galaxy S3 you get, you'll have different specs. If you've got the international version, you'll have the quad core 1.4 gigahertz Exynos processor with a gig of RAM. If you're in the U.S., you'll have a 1.5 gigahertz dual-core Snapdragon S4 uh, CPU with 2 gigs of RAM. Wherever you get the iPhone, you get the exact same phone. It's a dual-core A6 Apple chip running at about 1 gigahertz in each core, and it has a gigabyte of RAM, which is double what the original iPhone had. Now, both of these devices have pretty much the same specs if you go down the list. They both have LTE. Uh, they both have 8 megapixel cameras on the back and higher resolution cameras on the front at around 1.2, 1 1.3 1 uh, megapixels. They both have... Eight, Wi-Fi, ABGN, Bluetooth 4.0. Uh, the Galaxy S3 has NFC support. The iPhone 5 does not have NFC support. So again, vastly different devices, and we're going to compare the software experiences of both. And let's start off talking about the hardware. Now, one thing you're probably noticing already is that the Galaxy S3 has an LED notification light. Some people like that because it, you don't have to turn on your phone uh, to see if you have a missed call or a new SMS. Some people hate it because it's annoying. Apple doesn't think that people should have an LED notification light. Okay, uh, we both have, again, front-facing cameras here. We have proximity sensors. Um, <laughs> we've got a dedicated home button on both devices. And huge differences in screen. Four inches here, 4.8 inches here. Let's turn over to the side. The Galaxy S3 is technically a little bit thicker than the iPhone 4S, but it really doesn't feel that way because it's just such a large device in the hand. Uh, you kind of just get the sense that it's razor thin. Maybe it's helped by this nice silvery bezel along the side. Uh, so if we go to the other side, you've got this sort of curve. So you've got this sort of curve here on the Galaxy S3, very straight like an arrow on the iPhone 5. Here at the top, we have headphone jack on the Galaxy S3 and then just a uh, power button. Samsung likes to put power buttons on the side and you know there are pros and cons to that. It's good for people that are right-handed but if you're left-handed well you're kind of out of luck. Uh, we've got the volume rocker on the side on both devices and on the back very different designs. Uh, the Galaxy S3 has this really shiny plastic on the back and I always recommend to people that have the Galaxy S3 to get a case because it gets dirty and greasy easily. The iPhone 5, it's still new, remains to be seen whether this brushed aluminum gets dirty and greasy. Um, so far, so good. And on the bottom, Samsung went with the standard micro USB, which is nice, and Apple went with their own proprietary port called Lightning. So. You know, uh, your accessories won't work with that, but they will work with the Galaxy S3. Death, that's just the way things are. So let's turn on both devices. Uh, we s move the uh, water to unlock and we slide to unlock over here. And here's what we get. We've c we get a bigger screen here and a smaller screen there. We have Android on one, which of course lets you configure widgets and really do anything you want with the software. Apple doesn't like that idea, and, and that's fine. Apple likes to keep things simple iOS hasn't changed that much. You get rows and rows of icons. Um, Android kind of invented the notification shade here, and you pull it down and you can swipe notifications off the screen. Uh, Apple allows you to tweet and add a Facebook post from your notification shade. When you do have notifications, though, I must say on, the, uh, on iOS, it's a little bit frustrating because you can't swipe off individual notifications and save the ones you want for later. It's kind of an all or nothing thing. It groups them into categories and you really can't have that level of control over 
sort of which notifications you want to see and which you don't. So again, Android and iOS, very vastly different operating systems. Uh, it's just a matter of opinion whether you like one over the other. And we're not here really to judge that, we're trying to keep this video objective. So let's talk about speed. Let's go into the camera app on both and see which gets there first. First, let's clear out the memory on both. So we'll go over here, hit the trash can, and over here we will uh, do the old tap and close, right? Wish there was a close all button there too, but okay. Equal playing field. Let's open the camera app, see which gets there faster. And by the way, I should mention this is TouchWiz Jelly Bean. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit faster than those of you that have ice cream sandwich. This is the leaked TouchWiz Jelly Bean uh, operating system. So it's a little bit faster, a little bit nicer. By the time October comes around, everyone that has a Galaxy S3 will probably have Jelly Bean. So, camera, let's go. Okay, the iPhone 5 is a little bit faster there. Let's go into settings. So we've got settings here and here. A little bit faster on the iPhone 5. Okay, let's open Facebook. Two different Facebook apps. iOS Facebook app is native. Uh, the Android one is not. So that might have an impact on performance. It's not exactly an equal playing field here. iOS should be faster just because it's native. And it is. It went right into the screen. Next, let's test S Voice versus Siri. And Siri's been improved uh, on, in iOS 6, and the iPhone 5 kind of gets it done faster. So let's go into S Voice. We'll tap and hold. And what's the weather going to be on Tuesday? Looks like nice weather coming up Tuesday. Up to 73 degrees and sunny. The forecast for Tuesday is mostly sunny and nice. Okay, there we go. What's the nearest Italian restaurant? Here's a list of places I found. Okay, one of these Italian restaurants... Okay, so in half the tests, the iPhone's faster, and half the tests, the, uh, the Galaxy S3 is faster. Let's give it something a little bit different. What time is it in Sydney, Australia? The time in Sydney, Australia is 5.54 a.m. and 49 seconds CST. Okay, you get very similar answers. The I, It looks like the iPhone 5 uh, was faster three out of four times. Okay, let's jump into the YouTube application and see if we can see any perceptible difference between HD video. And of course, iOS doesn't have a YouTube app built into it anymore. Uh, now it is in the Android. And of course, iOS does not have a built-in YouTube app anymore. You get it from the App Store, which is great because now YouTube can control the application and when it's updated and what it's like and so forth. So let's go into the YouTube app, see which opens faster. Okay, so we got in there a little bit faster in the iPhone. Let's go to the sports category. Maybe we can ca capture some, uh, some high motion. And it looks like we have the same video listing over on, on each side, which is great. And we're going to play the same video at the same time. Uh, just a little note here on color saturation. The iPhone 5 has improved color saturation over the iPhone 4S, but there's nothing like an AMOLED screen. AMOLED screens have this insane amount of color saturation. Some people think it's very unnatural. Some people love it. Uh, it really depends on personal preference. So let's click on this video, see which one loads it faster. Okay, iPhone 5 faster. And oddly, we're not getting a full screen view here on the iPhone 5, but it's really beautiful here on the Galaxy S3, filling up the entire frame. And on the Galaxy S3, we know we're in HD. Okay, this might not be kid-friendly, but that's okay. In the YouTube app for iOS, you really can't choose sort of the level of quality. So let's find something else that we can watch, hopefully in high def. Um, okay, how about this one? iOS got there faster. Let's see if we can fill up the full screen. And again, you get some really weird display issues here on the iPhone 5. On the Galaxy S3, it seems to always fill up the frame and really be like one of the most immersive video experiences that you can get on a smartphone. Okay, so let's pop into the internet here. We're going to do some web browsing speed tests. 
All right, and that was about even, actually. So let's go to um, pocketnow.com here, and we'll just have the iPhone go first. Okay, we're getting the full sight on the Galaxy S3. And let's switch to the, uh, the desktop version here. So we're kind of looking at the exact same thing. And then we'll do some speed tests, see which of these guys is faster. And if we go into landscape, iPhone 5 is a little faster getting into landscape. You get this nice full screen browsing experience here on the iPhone 5. Everything kind of disappears. Here on the Galaxy S3, you still see the status bar at the top, although there's a way to disable that. So let's move down, zoom in. Clears up auto almost immediately. Takes longer to clear up here on the Galaxy S3. There's no doubt about that. Let's click on this link at the same time. And they're off at the same time. Going pop-up ad, but the, uh, the iPhone 51, even though this was kicked back to the mobile site, which is actually kind of awkward. So let's load that again, and we'll, we'll move around on the page once again. And both of these devices, at the end of the day, are very capable web browsing machines. Uh, it, it seems that the iPhone is doing a better job, and wa watch when I let go. It clears up a little bit faster here on the, uh, on the iPhone 5. Okay, so now we're on the reviews page, and I'm going to load a review which has tons of images. It's going to be slow. Let's go into the uh, Pocono Razor M review here, and we're going to tap them at the same time. See which gets there first. Okay, good. They're both going into the desktop view, and it looks like the iPhone 5 finished first. Galaxy S3 is still going there, and it finished second. And again, both these devices are very smooth. You don't get any checkerboards. Everything's loaded into memory right off the bat. Uh, checkerboards are really a thing of the past, thanks to Jelly Bean and newer versions of, of iOS. But again, you can really just see the difference in in how these screens treat images. Uh, color saturation is just a lot richer here on the Galaxy S3. Uh, perhaps you could say it's more realistic, more warm on the iPhone 5. It's really a matter of personal preference. Both are very high quality screens. So a lot of these tests, the iPhone 5 came out ahead of the Galaxy S3 in terms of speed. It loaded web pages faster, it opened apps faster, Siri it was faster than S-Voice, and so forth. But at the end of the day, you're stuck with the operating system, and you're stuck with the software. And a lot of people are really tired of iOS, and they kind of want the flexibility of Android. And Android no longer is that operating system for techie people. Uh, it's now for techie people, but it's also for everyone else that wants just a smooth, nice experience. Jelly Bean has really changed uh, the experience to be, dare I say, iOS-like. Everything is just smooth, and it feels like it's a put-together operating system. So in terms of sheer speed, the iPhone 5 wins, but it's up to you to determine which of these two devices suits your needs better, whether you want a big screen, a small screen, if you want Android or iOS, it's really up to you. These are both great, great smartphones. And what do you think? Which of these phones is better and why? Drop us a comment below, and if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and let us know what you want us to compare the iPhone 5 to. We're going to do more of these. Thanks for watching.